Oh my gosh, it's spirits. Everybody knows ghosts and water are the same thing. And I shall show you how I can levitate. But I can only do it under very specific circumstances. <laughs> Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. <laughs> and I would like to talk to my son, who was very real and very dead. Spell out the alphabet 70,000 times. We were bored. Wait for a table to tell me my future. Ah, it's a ghost hand. Ah. <laughs> Everybody say hi. <laughs> it's Houdini, bitch. I got you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, the Ouija board, a lot of people still believe in it. A lot of people, you know, swear by it, have these horror stories or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, in 1852, the scientist William Carpenter concluded that the Ouija board phenomenon was due to something called the idiomotor effect, which basically, so you know, we have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting this mic again unconscious mind <laughs> so our unconscious mind controls a lot in our body that we don't have to think we don't have to think about breathing we don't have to think about our blood flow any of that it also um does our muscles and mm -hmm. stuff so like, like what, if like something comes flying at us we dodge out of the stress, way having to think about it i get stressed my eye twitches real bad mm -hmm. yes so those those um subconscious movements that we don't really pay any attention to mm -hmm. um they did a bunch of studies and they showed that the subconscious mind, a lot of these studies are recent. They did one with like a robot mm -hmm. to like test the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So people would have information and if they would actually test them on it while they were thinking about it, they wouldn't know the answer. But then if they used the Ouija board, they would suddenly know the answer, which shows that our unconscious mind knows more than our conscious mind. Mm -hmm. So like you remember just about everything you've been through or you like learn but it's the it's there it's you the just, retrieving yes. it that we can't do yes but the ouija board and tarot cards and all of those things are shown to kind of like tap into that mm -hmm. like it we're not thinking about it so much it brings out the stuff that we're not able to trigger ourselves like purposely mm -hmm. basically yes so it kind of taps into that subconscious and it will move but i think that's really interesting the idea that it can kind of help us get to know the inner workings mm -hmm. of our minds yeah Kind of gets around that, that roadblock we've got. Yep. Something that we can't kind of pull out ourselves, like, mm -hmm. on purpose. Yeah. Another um, interesting thing people came up with at this point as a mm -hmm. way to communicate with spirits was dowsing rods. Do you know what these are? Yep. So farmers use it. It's like an old wives' tale that if you walk around your field with a stick, whenever you um, find underground water, they'll – some kind of, like, magnetic pull or something. No joke. We lived – on Rush Run, and we had, well, growing up, we had a well for water. Mm -hmm. And our landlords lived next door. He was older. His name was Butch, sweetest guy ever. <laughs> Butch. He, he was the sweetest person ever. He, in order to find our, he told my mom it. My mm -hmm. mom was like, there's no way. And he did it, and I was like, huh. swear to you. He, sw he swore by it because we wanted to know where the well was because mm -hmm. the one thing that did suck is, like, we couldn't wash too many clothes during the day or mm, that, yeah. that kind of stuff. But it, he... He, it worked and I was like okay because when he, he was doing it my mom's like it's something that like a lot of people like just it, let him go just, just let him go this is something some and he did it and I, me and my mom both went we're like we're like okay maybe it does work <laughs> maybe okay. maybe we shouldn't jump to a conclusions but yeah okay sir sorry all right so anyway but these people were like if it works for water it has to work for ghosts. And see, there's the <laughs> there's downfall. <laughs> we were equally leaps. there, and then we... Okay. Yeah, they just they kept making these weird leaps. We went from water to spirits. So obviously, it works for the dead. If it, works for the, if it works for the water, it works for the dead. Obviously, everybody knows. Ghosts and water are the same thing. They're, they're like, yeah, they're connected. Yeah, totally. So anyway, it's been debunked by most scientists, the whole dowsing rod. Even for water, like maybe maybe it works. I'm I don't telling know. you, Butch, Butch figured maybe Butch it is out. onto something. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So anyway, mediums in the Victorian era were the first to kind of be like, if it works for water, it can work for the spirits, mm -hmm. and they go around being like, yes or no, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it caught on. I still see people doing this today, like a lot of the I've I've heard of ghosts. Yes, people. Yeah. yes. So I don't know. Like I said, I don't know I everything. Mean, you would never tip it. I would never be out. 
with two sticks, but yeah. If you want to talk to Grammy and you find sticks in the yard and you want to try it, you go for it. Yeah, right. Table turning is another fun one. So it's a type of seance where a group of people gather around a table and they ask questions and wait for the spirits to turn the table either clockwise or counterclockwise to indicate yes or no. So you have like a round table and everyone puts their hands on the table and then you go, am I going to have a baby next year? And then it will turn, the table's supposed to like spontaneously turn, kind of like the Ouija board planchet moving Mm -hmm. on its own, this way or that way Mm -hmm. for yes or no. The part of this that I find insane is that they would also use this method for messages. Mm -hmm. And the way they would do this is they would go through the entire alphabet one letter at a time. Oh, no. And then when they got to the letter, it would turn yes. And they'd write that down. And then they'd do that for entire sentences. They would have had to been there for like, what, 10 hours going over this? I guess. There's no way. That's a long freaking table turning meeting. I would rather remain in the dark forever. <laughs> Better have a freaking babysitter for the kids for the next day or so. That's yeah. insane. So this is people filled their time with. Let's just spell out the alphabet 70,000 times. We were bored. Wait for a table to tell me my future. So yeah, that was also chalked up to the um, idio whatever metric thing. The muscles. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't it be so easy for somebody just to turn? the table yeah okay mm-hmm. that's what i'm thinking yeah. like if you have your legs underneath of it it'd be real easy to just yeah like i do just like nudge it with your yeah oh my gosh it's spirits you gotta yeah. move oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah no no it's it's, it's grammy okay no scientists like i said agree this happened do the subconscious thing but sometimes it was just outright fraud I mean, it's an easy... Which was usually the case. I was about to say, yeah. it's an easy say most of the time. That's what it was. Back then, tend to be the case. So one method was um, there would be a pin in the table, like just very subtle, mm-hmm. maybe under a tablecloth or something. Mm-hmm. And the person holding the seance would have a ring that had a little notch in it. So they would put their hands on the table like, look, I'm doing the same thing you are. Chink. And then they would put the ring in. I mean, they were smart about it, but in the worst ways. Yeah. Like, <laughs> definitely didn't use the intelligence for the right reasons. We could be so far ahead now if we put this in the right direction. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But no, we used it to con people out of money using their grief. It was hard times back then. Damn it. <laughs> Humans were great. Oh, God. <laughs> Another <sighs> example comes from... Oh, God. Names. I'm so sorry. I mispronounce everything. Usapia Palladino. Sure. I apologize. <laughs> uh, they, that person, had custom-made boots where the soles extended just beyond the boot's edge. Like, it just stuck out just a smidge. Mm-hmm. And he had it, like, reinforced so it was real strong. Mm-hmm. So it looked inconspicuous, but it could, it could do a lot. And he would just tuck that under the table... And then lift up his toes and be like, oh, God, did you see that? See what I'm saying? Ghosts. <laughs> it was the spirit. Uh, well, I Get mean, me money. We, yeah, we, I was, I was about to say, I mean, mm-hmm. it was desperate times back then. So I guess that's such a crappy thing to do, man. Uh-huh. Like, it really is. You have these people really believe in this stuff. Yep. Makes you wonder about some other things we've believed so since then. So many. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another way was they would, um, so everyone would put their hands on the table. The idea was to put your hands on the table and put pressure, mm-hmm. you know, so that you re- really get the, the energy into the table, mm-hmm. you know? So the person who was trying to trick everybody would not put any pressure. They put their hands down and make it look like it, but they would put no pressure. So then when the person on the other side of the table would do what they thought we were supposed to be doing, the table would tip. Mm-hmm. And then they would finally put pressure down and also put like their foot or their toe under the table to hold it Mm -hmm. and then they would lift the table up with their foot (laughs) i mean they had an entire like plan set up in place Uh sometimes so they would do this so they would put pressure on and then hold it in between their hands and like their their knee or their toe or whatever Mm -hmm. and then um they would lift it up sometimes up to two feet so just picture this with me all these poor people are believing. Mm-hmm. And then this jag off, right? 
It's just like, oh, nice look at the table. table's just magically floating off of oh, the floor. Yeah. It's floating. And these people are shocked and amazed. And then they give him money. I, and these people left, and that guy said, sucker. Yeah. It seems so silly. Went and had his meal, went to sleep, called it a day. It seems so silly and so ridiculous. And it's just so shitty. Can you imagine, though, these people, like, seriously, after these would take place and the people would leave, they're probably like, that was the easiest money. Yeah. Like I've like, ever made. Let me go eat my soup and I'm going to bed. It's been yeah. a day. With a sucker born every minute. Isn't yeah. that the saying or whatever? <laughs> oh, these poor, poor, naive people. <sighs> Another method was to catch the underside of the tabletop with the knee. Mm-hmm. And another was to merely just kick the table. Just, just kick, kick it. it. Kick it in the air. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 okay. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm my throat. But did you see the ghost? Yeah. He moved the table. It's insane. We were terrible people. We, we are. We are were, terrible. Yep. We them. are. The next fun one was ectoplasm. Do you, do you know what uh, ectoplasm is? Yeah. Like Slimer from yes. Ghostbusters? Yes. So I was about to say like Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. So that, that became a thing during this, this of period. Of course it did. Um, every instance found to be fake. And they're. Let's be shocked. All insane. <laughs> Like this. I was I was waiting for this part. It's my favorite part. Here we go. Buckle in. <clears throat> the physical investigator. So physical investigators were like people who would like look at this paranormal stuff. Mm-hmm. Kind of like paranormal investigators today. Right? Yeah. So the physical investigator, W.J. Crawford, had claimed that a fluid substance was responsible for the levitation of objects after witnessing the medium Kathleen Gollinger. So he's like, I, I saw some crazy stuff. You're not going to believe this. He, uh, he witnesses a bunch of her stuff and um, obtained a bunch of photographs of this substance that she made. Mm. He's like, she, she got this stuff and it came out of her and it's magical and I, you're not going to believe this. Look at it. <laughs> like, I don't understand how people did not sit and be like, you know, for example, well, the Fox sisters came out and said that all of their stuff they did was fake. So there's a possibility, you know, there's no. other people that are doing. Mm-hmm. No, everybody had good intentions back then. Nobody yes. was like that. Because we didn't have podcasts and documentaries to teach us about all the shitty things we do. You're welcome. We're doing a service. Yes. <laughs> no need to thank us. Uh, don't fall for ectoplasm. Oh, dear God. So anyway, so he's like, oh, you got to look at this picture I took. Uh <laughs> He described the substance as plasma and claimed the substance is not visible to the naked eye, but can be felt by the body. So she made this plasma. I didn't see it, but I felt it. And here's a picture I took of the nothing. (laughs) But it's there. If you look close enough. Trust me. It's there. The physicist and physical researcher Edmund Edward Fournier Dalb. Dalb. I butchered that. Again, I apologize. (laughs) He later investigated the medium Kathleen Gollinger, the same lady Mm -hmm. that had the invisible goo, I guess, at many sittings and arrived at an opposite conclusion to Crawford. Edmund deduced that no paranormal phenomena such as levitation had occurred with Gollinger and stated that he found evidence of fraud. (gasps) What? (gasps) Never. No, not Kathleen. She's such a saint. I know. You could feel it, though. (laughs) So he's like, yeah, I've watched her a couple times. Really, really don't think no. there's spiritual plasma. Um, turns out this ectoplasm that for some reason he said you couldn't see, which doesn't really make any sense. But there were sense. pictures, Brittany. I there don't, were pictures. I don't understand any of these people. There were pictures know. that showed nothing, but in the pictures there were something. So therefore it was real. Yes. That was the, that was the knowledge behind <laughs> this. It all makes sense. So it turns out the substance that everyone was ranting and raving about, right? Mm-hmm. Was muslin. Like the really thin, almost yes. cheesecloth. Yeah. And he found it hidden between her feet. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to extreme. <laughs> Who puts cheese between their feet? No, cheesecloth. Oh. I thought you were like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like gauze. <gasps> but you said cheese. I said what? Wait she was second. hoarding cheese between her toes. <laughs> She went to extreme lengths. <laughs> I need my money. I'm putting cheese between my toes. <laughs> I gotta pay the rent. <laughs> oh my. Here, Brody, come here. Come say hi. Come put your face in it. Yeah. 
Cuz. This is Brody. This is my oldest son. Say hi, Brody. Hi. Okay, bye, Brody. <laughs> you look so happy. <laughs> He's really a nice kid, I swear. He is. He's <laughs> just teenagers. There was not cheese between the feet. It was a cloth. Got it. Yes. So, okay. you know, like for Halloween, you get that, like... The gauze stuff. You gauze. Hang, like, you yeah. Up. Yes. It's that. Okay. So, anyway, yeah, she was just hiding it between her feet and like, you don't see anything. <laughs> How was that not noticed before? I don't know. Or it was, and they just didn't care. Okay. He's like, you could feel the spirits. <laughs> she's just got... There's gauze between my toes. Oh, yeah, she's just hiding stuff between her feet okay. in, like, the most obvious spot. I can't believe I thought you said cheese. No, not, not cheese. No, oh, I'm glad. That would be weird. You so, know how much of this stuff is weird? That would, have, that, that would not be that weird, Brittany. <laughs> that would be the most rational <laughs> thing we've heard so far. Just saying. So the Society for Physical Research Investigations into Mediumship exposed many fraudulent mediums. They were just everywhere. That would have been a fun job. That would have been, you're fake, you're yeah. a liar. Just undercover, liar. like, lies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they exposed so many of these fraudulent, like, physical mediums. Mm-hmm. So, like, the ectoplasm and the, the stuff that can be easily debunked. Yeah. Um, they called out so many of these jabronis mm-hmm. that um, people were like, yeah, we don't trust you guys anymore. It became kind of a joke. It didn't really gain as much of a following well, as like traditional when, mediums. When, when you start adding this crazy stuff that, like, no, first of all, nobody should have ever believed in to begin with, but you start adding this stuff and then it's very, very obvious how fake it yeah. was. It's hard to have a following after uh-huh. that. I mean... They still did, though. Some right. people were still like, I am devoted okay. at this point. You do you, buddy. <laughs> the physical researcher, Albert von Schrecknogzing, so sorry, <laughs> investigated the medium, Ava Carrier. She could produce ectoplasm that had faces and images in it. Now we're <gasps> stepping it up a notch. We're, we're dropping the game. Yes. My family's being loud. I'm sorry. Sounds like we're friggin' tearing the house down upstairs. <laughs> it's <the ghosts. laughs> well, it's both of our husbands plus Sarah. all four of our kids. Sarah, is that Sarah. you? She followed me here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she says, I can make ectoplasm that has faces in it. So I'm using telepathy and Because we have goo. to step it up a notch. Exactly. We have to add more to it. So uh, he claimed this guy was like fascinated Mm -hmm. he's like she can create this goo and there's faces in it and she's a genius and ah he claims it's the result of idioplasty which is when a medium can form images from their mind into ectoplasm not from spirits but like she can just plant it there with her brain (laughs) so it's more telepathy okay yeah not weird at all totally plausible so he's so blown away by this he writes a book called The Phenomena of Materialization in 1923, which includes photographs of this ectoplasm. And he's like, oh my God, look, this is so, this is amazing. I I can't believe I've witnessed this. I've discovered this amazing thing. People start looking at these pictures and going, bro, are you okay? Well, because (laughs) by now people were like, really? No, 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 it's even better. Oh, great. Critics pointed out, The photographs of the ectoplasm revealed marks of magazine cutouts, pins, and pieces of string. (laughs) We This guy wrote a book. (laughs) We failed as a society. (laughs) This guy spends time. Magazine cutouts, and this guy said, I'm writing a book. Publish it. This is fascinating. (laughs) Idiot. So the magician Carlos Maria de Heredia replicated the ectoplasm that she made using a comb, gauze, and a handkerchief. He's like, look, I did it too. Where's my book? You can write a book about me as well. (laughs) The ectoplasm of Carrier was faked and was made of cut out paper faces from newspapers and magazines on which you could still see the fold marks. I mean, they didn't even, like, it's the, (laughs) it is the fact that we didn't just make a book. They didn't even really try to hide how fake Mm -hmm. it was. They knew people, there are still people, apparently, that would write an entire book about it because they were so gullible that (laughs) they didn't even try to hide it. They'll believe this. It's fine. (laughs) A photograph that Carrier had taken from the back of the ectoplasm revealed that there was a magazine cutout, and the back said Le Miro, which is a French magazine 
Le Mirior or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it actually had the name of the magazine on the back. That's what I'm saying. Like, we didn't even, she didn't, <laughs> she didn't even try. She didn't even try to hide it. She was like, listen, if you're this dumb to believe it, there's no chance of me actually, like, go yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. So after this guy discovered, I hit your mic too. What the? I can't be trusted. Keep your hands to yourself, Brittany. <laughs> I can't be trusted. <laughs> anyway, after he discovered Carrier had taken her ectoplasm faces from the magazine, he defended her by claiming that she read the magazine and just it was from her memory. She read the magazine and then those images were in because her head. Because there has to be an explanation. The book's out there now. Yeah. Now he has to have something to back it up so he doesn't look like a complete dummy. I gotta cover my ass. She just, she just, she cut them out with her mind. Oh my gosh. She told me to write the book. Yeah. So, yeah, he still tried to defend her and said that, oh, she just read the magazine and had him in her mind and then she used brain scissors to cut out her mind image. <laughs> Because that's way easier than just saying that she faked it to basically get money and become famous. But uh-huh. The Danish medium, Einar Nielsen, was investigated by a committee from the Christiania University in Norway in 1922. This is what I was talking about earlier. Are you ready? No. <laughs> no. So they, they went to this, this medium, Einar Nielsen, and they're like, show us what you got, bro. And they observed him to see if he was legit. And they found out that during his seance, not only was his ectoplasm fake, he was hiding it in his rectum. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. So he's like, everybody close your eyes. Like, pull this out of my butt real quick. <laughs> Literally pulling things out of my oh ass. Oh my gosh. Pull this out of my ass, some plasma. Yeah, there you go. Ghosts. <laughs> what is wrong with people? I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'd be hurting for money to the point I'd be pulling something out of my butt. Oh my gosh, it's plasma. Let's write a book. (laughs) Most people would um, shove it down their throats and then regurgitate it, which is a level of commitment I don't have for anything. No. No. Yeah. I mean, I understand times were hard back then, but not enough for that. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I feel, I feel the ghosts. They're, they're moving. Let me go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back with some plasma for you. Pull <laughs> stuff out of their throat. Like, see, guys? <laughs> oh. And people were like, fascinating. That's amazing. We encouraged it. We encouraged it. This one. Oh, this one's even worse. Maybe. Depends on what your definition of worse is. Mina Crandon was a famous medium known for producing ectoplasm during a seance sitting right mm-hmm. she produced a small ectoplasmic hand from her stomach which waved about in the darkness so she'd be like ah it's a ghost hand ah. <laughs> everybody say hi was it a real hand was it a ghost hand do you think no no why not well i mean we're on a track record here her career ended however when biologists examined the hand and found it to be made of a piece of carved animal liver So they've gone with cloth between toes, plasma up our butt, Mm -hmm. down our throat, and now we're also using carved animal liver. We're carving out little baby hands. Let me use my I mean, I'll give it to them. They went all out. Yeah. They They left no stone unturned. They did everything that was necessary. No (laughs) regrets. No regrets. No (laughs) regrets. Walter Franklin Prince described the Crandon case as the most ingenious, persistent, and fantastic complex of fraud in the history of psychic research i mean they got famous for being the worst and fakest and (laughs) most fraud and in the psychic research so congratulations he's like listen real fucked up but (laughs) we'll give it to you you're smart we'll give you something for it oh Oh, good god oh this is my favorite (gasps) oh yes Yes. Levitating was another thing that these people were like, look what now, I can do. Yes, I've heard so much about this. <laughs> There's this guy named Colin Evans. And he goes around. He's like, everybody, I can levitate. I can use the power of the spirits to pull myself off of this mortal plane and to uh, ascend, you know. Mm-hmm. So he's going around telling everybody, come buy tickets and I shall show you how I can levitate. It's totally magic. But I can only do it under very specific circumstances. <laughs> All the lights have to be off. <laughs> All the lights have to be off. You guys have to turn around and close your eyes, and I will levitate for you right in front of you. Not quite, but close. <laughs> okay. All the lights have to be off. Complete darkness. 
The spirits don't like it when there's light. <laughs> I also must be standing on a chair so you can see me. You know, that's why. Nothing sauce about Nothing, that. Nothing, no. I just, I want you to, you know, everyone have a good view. Mm-hmm. Um, also, no one can have a camera but me. And I have to be able to control it with the little button, like the remote thing. Only me. Because you'll mess it up and the spirits won't like you. They're shy. I mean, at least he found a reasoning <laughs> for everything. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So he's like, totally dark. I have to have a chair. Only I can take the photo. You guys just sit here and chant. And in darkness me. and spend money and spend money <laughs> and then when the flash photography thing goes off you shall see me levitating and you shall be amazed want well, to guess what actually happened oh i know what happened <laughs> and there were people stupid enough to believe it <laughs> everyone's chanting like ha blah 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 and he jumped he just jumps he jumps they he take snaps, this picture as he jumps and he's levitating he does it at the precise moment that whenever he's like at the tip top part of his jump, like those videos, all of a sudden he's like, "Look at me!" Like those videos you see on TikTok, <laughs> people like they'll jump into the pool and they spell out the word love, and like they make the L with their body and exactly. then the O and the V. Yeah, that's literally what he was doing. He was jumping at the same time as taking picture, and he's levitating. The picture wasn't being taken as his feet were off the chair. He was levitating. No, and then every and the chanting was to like cover up the sound of him, like jumping and hitting the floor. <laughs> So he's like, you need to chant. It's a very important part. (laughs) I feel like these people probably asked for their money back. (laughs) No, he sold out places. Like he went on like a little tour. (laughs) He was a big hit. I mean, this is this is getting ridiculous at this point. (laughs) Do you remember Stuart from Mad TV? Look what I can do. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Look at these pictures. I'll I'll put them on the screen. Look at his clothes. You can tell he's jumping. Yes. All of his clothes are just like, <laughs> look at, wait a second, wait till you guys are looking at what we're looking at. I mean, it is very obvious. Like, it's not even hidden that he's jumping. He's like, <laughs> and there are people that spend money on this. And he went on a yep. tour, so people supported him. Mm-hmm. Shame. Uh, another fun spiritualist thing was astral projection. Like in those movies. Oh, what is it? It's not The Conjuring. What's the other ones? Oh, same guys in it. Insidious? Yes. They talk about astral projection Mm -hmm. and stuff. That was a big thing that came Mm -hmm. about during this period. So Annie Horniman was a British actress and spiritualist who claimed she could astrally project herself wherever she wanted. Okay, that's pretty normal. Yeah. Given what normal we're working with. Mm -hmm. Including Saturn, where she normally visited and spoke to the locals. We have locals? (laughs) We have locals. Saturn? Yeah. Do they just just go up there and get a cup of sugar? Yeah, she she goes and picks up recipes and, you know... (laughs) Local gossip of the Saturn. Oh my gosh, can you imagine now? Where's your friend live? Saturn? They would lock you up in a crazy <laughs> Gloop Glorb has the most amazing casserole. Can't wait to try it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and people were like, oh wow, what are the people on Saturn yeah. like? <laughs> they haven't even discovered it in NASA yet, but I can go to Saturn. I could tell you everything about yes. it. With the locals there. That part is the part that kills me. There's just locals. They just, they live just like us up on Saturn. Yeah, they're just like us. I mean, just, they do all the same things we do, just on Saturn. People believe this too, I'm going to guess. Yep. People believed everything. Okay, so there were a lot of crazy con artists, a lot of crazy people. Not, not crazy. Like I said, I understand why. A lot of sad, naive people. There was a lot that went on back then. Yeah. It was easy for this stuff to... There was so much, like we said in the beginning, there was so much new stuff mm-hmm. and a very short time span that was dumped on people that had their own beliefs that were shoved into their heads for mm-hmm. a very long time. And the matter of just 100 years might seem like a lot, but in this, it, for this much to be crammed in. It's, for an entire way of life to completely yeah, change. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, they had a rough. Yeah. So anyway, con men, bad. Other people, I kind of feel bad for. Yeah. But anyway. For all the people who believed and all the people who pretended to believe, there Mm -hmm. were also a lot of very outspoken skeptics who made it their life, who made it their life's mission to be like, you are not going to take advantage of people anymore. This is good. Messed up. And one of these people was Harry Houdini. He was pissed. Houdini said, all right, let's let's go. He's like, you want to square up? Let's go. Let's play this game. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. When he was first starting out... Um, 
he was, you know, a starving artist. Mm-hmm. He actually did some of this con stuff to make make it by. But he realized it was wrong, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Houdini had a heart. He did. He came around. Uh, he st- yeah, he started off his career doing these readings mm-hmm. and being a medium. So he knew all the tricks of the trade, and he was like, you lying liars. We're past this <laughs> now. lying liars. <laughs> so whenever he would start, whenever he did this whole medium thing, he would send out his wife ahead of him, posing as a Bible salesperson. So she would show up and be like, hello, I'm just a nice Christian lady selling you Bibles. Mm-hmm. And I come in and speak about your deepest desires, please? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she'd come up, she'd chat the person up, She'd get some intel on them because you're talking about the Bible. You're going to start talking about spirituality and religion. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a gauge of like their family. She she was kind of that like made them feel comfortable, made them feel like they could open up and talk to her. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she'd go in and she'd get all the deets, you know, like, oh, my grandpa loved this Bible. Do you have a grandpa perchance? Is he dead? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) While we're on this subject. (laughs) While we're speaking about it. Oh, man. Do you know any dead people who love Bibles too? (laughs) She would go in and she'd chat him up. Yeah. And then she would, you know, she would leave and she'd scurry on over to Harry. Here's the tea, sis. And be like, here's what I got, babe. Mm-hmm. So she'd be like, his name is this. This is who died. This is who he sat about. I saw this picture up here, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And so give him all the information. And then he would go in later, give a reading, and astound and amaze with his knowledge. Which is messed up. Yeah, because they made these people comfortable, Mm -hmm. made them feel like they were in a safe environment to talk. And they used it against them for money. So you can see, like, how he was like, this is messed up. I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm not going to let anybody else. Yeah. So good for him. Bad, Mm -hmm. bad of him at first. Bad at first. Good for him to figure out what he was doing was wrong. But we're young. We make mistakes. Yeah. Later on, Houdini is this huge, you know, magician, world famous, Mm -hmm. has this huge platform. And uh, Houdini is best friends with, not like best friends, but really close to Sir Arthur Cor- uh, I'll get it one day. <laughs> We've struggled with names. Oh my this God, session. I'm so bad with names. To be fair, though, all the names that are on here, uh, not easy names. They're not. No. So Houdini and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote the Sherlock Holmes books, mm-hmm. they were like buddies, right? Oh, okay. They hung out. They were, they were friends. And Doyle was like hook, line, and sinker for spiritualism. He was like, this is, shit's great. Just wait, man. You're going to love it. Mm-hmm. And Houdini's like, I can guarantee you I am not. I promise I'm not. <laughs> You're a cool guy, but too far. You, you have your fun, but stay over there yes. with it. No, thanks. But anyway, he's like he's like hounding Houdini. He's like, you got to try this. It's going to be great. I'll make you a believer, buddy. Don't worry. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. He's just like trying to peer pressure him into yeah. this whole thing. And Harry's like, no. <laughs> I told you once. Yeah. So anyway, he invites Harry to a seance. He's like, I'm going to make a believer out of you. It's okay. And he says, my wife is going to contact your mother who is dead, which is rude, but okay. (laughs) He's going to contact your mother and write down the words and you're going to get a message from your mom. You're going to be a believer after this. It's going to be great. I don't think this went good. It doesn't. He's like, humor me, buddy. Just come on. Harry's like, fine. Go for it. Whatever. I'll Mm -hmm. show up. I'm not happy about it, but I'll come. Mm Mm-hmm. So he gets to the seance, and she does the whole thing like, "Oh, I'm I'm getting the connection." <laughs> the I whole sense, nine yards, basically. Yeah, I sense her. Oh, she's she's coming through. <gasps> Harry, darling, can you imagine? He's probably sitting there like this. <laughs> he is, and he's like, <laughs> "Son of a bitch." She's like, "Oh, Harry, darling, I've missed you so much." Mm-hmm. She writes a cross at the top of the paper. She's like, "I have a message for you, my sweet." Ah, oh. she writes a cross, symboling like Jesus. I'm with Jesus, or whatever. Mm-hmm. His mother was Jewish, <laughs> so crosses mean literally nothing. Yeah, no. And then Harry's like, <laughs> "Shut up." Yeah, he was pissed. Well, because now not only he he was very upfront, you know, we're cool, we're mm-hmm. friends, but you keep your beliefs there. I keep mine here. So not only did he give him a fair warning, he was then forced to be mm-hmm. in this. And now you called out his like basically a touchy subject, his mother mm-hmm. who is deceased. And now she, you've gone as far as running across and she's so like, yeah, 
I would have been pissed too. Yeah. He didn't even want to be there to begin with. You so. tried to use my dead mom to con me into this stuff. For a meeting I don't even want to be at or partake in, basically. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he flips out. He's like, you know what? Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. I'm done. <laughs> He's like, ah, you've, you've ha- I've had it with you. <laughs> Houdini's fed the fuck up is basically He's, what's going on. He's on a mission <laughs> He's now. done. He's like, you know what? I'm going to prove you and everyone else that this is bullshit. Did they stay friends after no, that? No, I don't think so. I, I figured that kind of was the end of the line, but I was just... Maybe he was just mad at the wife more. I don't know. I didn't, didn't look it up at, like if they stayed friends. I mean, me personally, I, I, I wouldn't have been his friend. I'd have been kind of mad because I told you I didn't want to be here to begin with. And yeah. you forced me to. You want you pressured me into. And, and then went after my, my dad, dead mom. Like, So he goes undercover to different mediums and spiritualists. Mm -hmm. So he puts on a disguise, because he's pretty famous. Mm -hmm. So he puts on, I don't know, like a mustache or a hat or something. I don't know. But he makes appointments with these mediums. And he's like, "Uh, hello, I am Kevin. I am definitely not Harry Houdini. (laughs) No, it is just regular old Kevin. And I would like to talk to my son, who was very real and very dead. I'm basically tricking these people. <laughs> wonder. Go ahead. Show me what you got. Let's see it. I am so sad. Mm-hmm. And uh, my name is Kevin. Remember? Yes. Yes. Not Harry. <laughs> Not Harry Houdini. And once these people were like, oh, yes, your son, he says, Papa, I miss you so much. Joke's on you, bitch. I don't even got a son. <laughs> he would rip <laughs> off his disguise and be like, ah, you liar. It's Houdini. <laughs> I get Houdini, bitch. I got you. <laughs> Can you imagine? These people were probably like, wait a second. <laughs> oh, my <Right>? gosh. <laughs> Just the, dr- dr- the drama. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's me. <laughs> They'd have been like, <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he go. Yeah. He does this over and over. And this isn't just a one-time thing. He makes it a point to go around disproving medium after medium after so medium. That would have been so fun. I know. That would have been awesome. Old-timey people had all the great fun. Yeah, man. If it wasn't for the dying at 50. Like, <laughs> I love Houdini. I love the history. But I never knew that he actually was part of, like, oh, yeah. the debunking with this. Uh-huh. And I think that's freaking awesome. It makes me love him even more. So, anyway, he does this a lot. He, he has a huge hand in debunking all of this. Mm-hmm. That, along with, like, some new scientific discoveries that come out. People just getting generally more, you know, intelligent. Because mm-hmm. he was this world famous. People loved Houdini. Oh, yeah. People, it's yeah. still, you... There, I don't know anybody who say the word and the name Houdini. They, they don't know who he is, well, or at least of him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He keeps doing this for a while, plays a big role in debunking. And in 1926, Houdini gets approached by these college kids before a show. Mm-hmm. So they come backstage, and they're like, Houdini, we love you. We heard that you could take a punch, any punch, and mm-hmm. be fine. Mm-hmm. Is it true? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, sure. He would do this thing where he would like do something with his muscles. Mm-hmm. He would tense them up in such a way to where no matter what, like within reason, obviously. Mm-hmm. If you hit him, he'd be fine. Mm-hmm. But the kid didn't wait for him to do the whole warm up thing he's got to do. Mm-hmm. He just clocked him right in the gut and burst his appendix. And Houdini's like on the floor in pain, but he's like, oh, the show's got to go on. Yeah. Like, it's there's people out there. I got to be out there. So he kind of like sucks it up, gets himself together, and he tries to continue to do the show. He gets out there. He has a 104 degree temperature. He's fumbling. He's like almost falling over. His appendix burst. <laughs> yeah. He didn't know that yet. Well, yeah, but that's, yeah. So he ends up passing out in the middle of the show. Has a 104 degree temperature. Can they you wake him up. how miserable that would be? Uh, under those lights, oh too. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. So they wake him up, and they're like, oh, you got to go to the hospital. He's like, no. No, the show must go on. He keeps doing the show. Houdini, my man. Passes out again. And then everyone's like, dude, you have got to stop and go to the hospital. Like, you can't keep doing this. Knock it off. He grabs his wife and says, if I die, I want you to hold a seance every year and see if I say these specific words. And then he gives her like some kind of code Mm -hmm. that she has to remember. Mm -hmm. If they say anything else, they're lying. Don't believe it. Mm hmm. Because he's like, he wanted to take this experiment through to the other side. <laughs> Dude, I'm, that's like a legendary. Commitment. Like, I'm telling, you're on your deathbed. And you're like, you know what? Just to just to go out on a good note, we're going to keep this going even when I am gone. If I'm going to die, we're going to get some use out of yeah, this. Yeah, all right. Dang. Yeah, even on his deathbed, he was riding the Petty Express. Yep. Hell bent on proving these people wrong. So he passes out again, comes to again. 
I guess he tries to do more of the show because he didn't really want to listen to people. Um, he ended up not going to the hospital because he was like, it's too late. I'm just going to finish the show. And he that up, like, oh my gosh, that like breaks my heart. Yeah. He ends up dying later oh. that night, I think, or maybe the next day. And um, yeah, he had appendicitis. And when they punched him, it Can we just it. pause for a second? Can you imagine that college kid the next day? You killed Houdini. Oh, oh my, my God. God. He was my hero. <laughs> I just wanted to punch him in his stomach. <laughs> I just wanted to see a cold trick. That kid. Oh, that, that probably, yeah. He was probably outcast of yes. society. <laughs> you killed Houdini. You murderer. Oh, great. Yeah, so anyway, um, his wife for the next 10 years holds a seance every year, just like he asked, and he never comes through. Never hears those words. I've, I've, I have looked it up, but I forget. Oh, wait. No, never mind. I didn't find it. <laughs> I read the wrong part. I'll have to look that up later. I'm curious to know what the saying was. Yeah. So, like, I don't remember exactly what the word. There were a bunch of random words. If you guys want some homework to do, look up and see what yeah. Houdini wanted his wife to listen for from the other side. So, after 10 years, she calls it. She says, and this is, I like this. This is pretty boss. Uh, 10 years is long enough to wait for any man. <laughs> She Period. said, for 10 years, I had a seance. You didn't say what you said you were going to say. End of discussion, you're gone. Yes. Love you. I'm going to assume <laughs> we're gone. Sorry. <laughs> uh, people still hold seances to this very day, and he's never showed up, proving his point even in death. Houdini proved his point throughout life and after he was gone. So, so yeah, everyone knows him for his, like, his tricks his and tricks. his magician, but this was his like real-life passion. But Houdini was kind of a badass. Yeah. Anyway, that is what we've got on spiritualism and how crazy it was. What it do you was, think? It, it was a fun ride. <laughs> a lot of twists and turns. Spiritualism was an interesting ride. We're still doing the same stuff today to Unf a point. Unfortunately, there are yeah. still people that are frauds. and So maybe take this with you to the future and make better decisions. If you liked it, like and subscribe. Please help us out. We're building. We're on yes. our building path. And thank you for listening to History is a Horror Show. Bye, guys. Bye.